Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. It is our webinar um, where we cover anything that may be of interest to libraries. Um, the show is free and open to anyone to watch. And we do the sh these sessions live on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We have all our recordings up on our website as well from all of our previous shows. So you can always watch the recordings, get the presentations. Um, any links that might be related to the topic are available there. Um, we do a mixture of things here. Uh, book reviews, which is kind of what we're doing today, yeah. Um, train, mini training sessions, interviews, demos. Um, as I said, anything library related, um, we are happy and want to have it on the show. Um, we have guest speakers come in sometimes, and we sometimes have um, Nebraska Library Commission staff um, be our uh, presenters. And that's what we have today. Um, today our topic is Harlequin Take Me Away, the NLC Book Talks Romance. Um, this is a, I guess we say second in a series of yeah, book or talking things. An informal series. Informal series, yes, yes. Don't look for yeah, certain things at a certain time. Um, Laura Johnson over here, um, all the way over on, the, on my left, um, and Deborah Dragos, both from the Nebraska Library Commission, are going to share um, romance type books that they have read um, that they think you mm -hmm. may be interested in um, and some other information about um, romance. romances, yeah, in, romances general. in general. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I will just hand it over to you guys to take it away. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Down the there. arrow, yeah. Mm -hmm. You might need to click on it with a mouse. Um, there, let's just switch over. Um, okay, now do the down arrow. There, there you go. go. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about a number of romances we've read um, and uh, maybe make some comments about the romance genre in general. Mm -hmm. um, this ended up kind of being, well, I wouldn't say it was a genre study. It wasn't quite formal enough for that. <laughs> but um, we both dipped our toes into books that we don't normally read as part of our pleasure yeah. <laughs> reading uh, list. Yeah. So, yeah, we were trying things out this time. We were. And we had somewhat of a discussion on what an actual romance is. And yeah. basically, you know, we there are a lot of things publishers call romances that might not fall into a typical romance mm -hmm. um, definition but we were we basically wound up looking for a relationship between a man and a woman and it had to have a happy ending right pretty much <laughs> um, I don't I think all of these are between a man and a woman but I'm not even sure that that is that isn't that completely true necessary um, and they're not all published by Harlequin no uh, Laura just came up with that catchy title so <laughs> It is the, the, the commonly known yeah, you know, romance. It is the commonly known. known. Yeah, oh, know. Which has just been bought by HarperCollins. Mm -hmm. ah. Yeah. They right. just got acquired. Um, and it, it's a, actually a huge piece of pleasure reading. They say that it's what mm -hmm. something like 40% of the paperback books that are sold are romances. Wow. So um, this is not something really to just say, oh, well, that, you know, that, that goes in that corner. Um, romances are a big deal. Mm -hmm. A lot of people read ro what, what would fall into the category of romances. Mm -hmm. So we thought maybe this was appropriate to talk about. And, mm -hmm. and there are so many different sub-genres within yes. romance. Um, you know, there's the historical, um, in which yeah. Regency is a part of historical. It's a sub, another subsection of that. You have your contemporary, you have paranormal which is, and fantasy, which is really big at the moment, um, romantic suspense, which, you know, when we were younger, <clears throat> was often called gothic or it was Sometimes. related to gothic mm -hmm. or the had she but known yeah. <laughs> category. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you had mentioned adventure and mystery because, you know, those often have... Uh, they have the, a love interest in there, too. And so is it a romance? Isn't it a romance? Uh, is not always cut and dry. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And and you have your, your Christian fiction, Amish fiction. Um, you have 
what are more like themes maybe than than subgenre? Where you've yeah. got your military, you have your Western cowboy uh -huh. <laughs> um, stories. You have romance and kilts. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. Um, and then for a while there, Jane Austen, everybody was looking for Mr. Darcy in there in a lot of the yeah. romance books. Mm. So things come and go. But with the first book that we have up here, I read this one. And it's called The Heart's Pursuit by Robin Lee Hatcher. She's a very popular author. And actually, this one could fall under a number of subgenres. It's a historical. It takes place in 1871. It's also a Western. And it's Christian fiction. Um, the main character, Silver Matlock, was jilted at the altar by a man who, turned, it turns out, stole them all the money in her father's safe and her stepmother's jewelry and has mm. taken off. The hero <laughs> is a bounty hunter who's actually on the track of the man who killed his family back in Kentucky. But he were, is working as a bounty hunter and she hires him to find her ex-fiance. It, 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 can appeal to people who are looking for that historical, you know, Western, the growth of Colorado and Nevada, the mm -hmm. silver mining and that type of thing. It can could interest people, you know, who who like the horseback riding and there she mm -hmm. goes with him. It turns out, you know, her stepmother wants to bundle her off to Denver to to stay with her stepsister because oh the embarrassment. But she decides that, you know, she needs to be part of this. So she's a spunky heroine. She goes on the trail with him. Um, so there's the camping out, there's the horseback riding, there's um uh the the whole um small town the saloons, the gambling, the um, working girls, um, just a, a lot of different things that you would expect from a Western and mm -hmm. from the this historical. It was you know, a very entertaining story. It's okay. <laughs> um, so, you know what everybody wants to know? Hmm. How sexy was it? Oh. oh, yes. Okay, yeah. sorry. Christian story, there's some kisses. Ah, See, that's ah. the key of the Christian part of the beginning, I think, would have given ah, the idea okay. of how, how, mm -hmm. how romantic <laughs> is that one going to get. Okay, well, yeah. this one starts at kissing and moves, moves further. <laughs> um, this is by Elizabeth Lowell, Night Diver. A, um, uh, Elizabeth Lowell is a, a nom de plume of Anne Maxwell, who writes books on her own and also um, sometimes joins with her husband and writes books. Um, one of the hallmarks of Elizabeth Lowell's books is she usually does uh, research and so gives you a picture of something that you may not altogether uh, know. This one is about treasure diving, hmm. uh, treasure recovery. Um, a young woman who grew up in a uh, family of People who did treasure diving um, was involved in a horrific accident as a very young woman um, and moved away, wanted nothing to do with it. But now she's come back to help save the family business um, and uh, encounters a, um, a man who's sent to over by the people who are funding this treasure hunt mm -hmm. to oversee the treasure hunt. Um, instant attraction and um, quite quite a romance um, but the uh, for me the interesting part of this is the um, information about diving uh, mm -hmm. something I really knew nothing about and the idea of recovering treasure so it's set on an, uh, a Caribbean island mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, of course, there's a bad guy and, and we have, you know, some suspense at the end. Will the bad guy win? Um, and yes, it all ends happily um, and they find the treasure. Hmm. Um, in some ways, a typical book. In other ways, um, probably more, adve more adventure in this one 
than some romances. Um, the, the romance is really quite central, but uh, there is a plot that involves the, the treasure. Um, and the characters are perhaps a little bit older and a little bit more worldly than some romances. Okay. But, um, you know, if you're interested in a very superficial, but a view of um, something that you hadn't known anything about before, in this case, diving, an interesting book. And Lowell has written many books. Um, mm -hmm. I actually listened to this one. Um, mm. Audio, and it was good. It was good audio. Okay. The next title, The Scandalous Adventures of the Sister of the Bride, of course indicates there is a wedding in this book, mm -hmm. um, is by Victoria Alexander, who is actually a Nebraska author. She oh. lives in Omaha. So that's an attraction for, of course, our patrons here in Nebraska. Um, it is a historical that takes place in 1887, so it's a little bit later than, than the first one I talked about, mm -hmm. and it, um, it's not a regency, okay? But there's still, you know, the prim and proper Lady Hargate, Hargate I'm not quite sure how they pronounced <laughs> it, who is actually a widow. Um, this is one of a series of books, uh, well actually, there is no specific series titles, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I could. I have to admit, I have not read the had not read the, the two two or three previous books by this author. But it's obvious that characters carry over, um, and I think it might have been easier following a couple of the plot lines if I had read the previous book. But it was mm -hmm. still very interesting. That's really very common in mm -hmm. romances, though, for them to have. Um, Minor characters in one book then become uh, major characters in the next book. Uh, like right. Introduce them slightly, yes. and then mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. This one um, does start out in New York for just a brief time, and then goes to the countryside of England. You know the the traditional manor house um, of Lady Hargate's uh, parents. Her name is Delilah, so even though she acts, she thinks of herself as prim and proper and very traditional, maybe she's, mm, okay. She does go on adventures, okay? She does have a couple adventures, but they're all with one man, Sam Russell, who's a somewhat brash American, um, who it turns out is a friend um, and a business partner uh, or business associate of the groom her uh, future brother-in-law, Lady Hargate's future brother-in-law. So they wind up in England at the same time at this manor house and they've had this, um, they met each other briefly in New York and they had this um, adventure. She's not expecting to see him again, is rather mm. taken aback when she does <laughs> see him again and the sparks fly and there's a lot of sparring in, in their their um, conversation and um, yeah <laughs> if people um, are looking for two characters that are very strong um, they both make plans but the plans don't always turn out the way they expect them to um, Sam is very uh, uh, into new inventions and looking to the future mm -hmm. while Delilah is Trying, struggling to stay with you know traditional and things things that have been there for time immemorial. Um, another interesting book. Uh, your level is yeah okay. It's not as graphic as, as some books, but there are some scenes that are that are more <laughs> explicit. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, this is Susan Wiggs, another very popular author, and this one, I'm, I'm not sure that some people would call it a romance. I think they might call it women's fiction, oh. which um, I'm not completely sure of the distinctions there. <laughs> um, in this young woman who works in San Francisco as a um, acquirer, of goods for um, an auction firm to sell um, person. Um, 
is asked by a man that she didn't know was her grandfather, but it turns out he is her grandfather, um, to come, or she's asked by the family maybe, to come to, it's in wine country where he runs an apple orchard. And the apple orchard is um, financially failing. He's had an accident and is in a coma in the hospital. Um, she encounters a half-sister she didn't know she had. She also encounters a banker who's trying to desperately to help them uh, in their financial pickle, but he uh, is a winemaker on the side, and she has a romance with him. Um, meanwhile, what I thought, again, was the most interesting part of the book is that it includes a number of flashbacks to... Um, Nazi occupation of Denmark, where the grandfather oh. was a boy working in the resistance. And it turns out that there was a family treasure, um, which seems to be lost, but if they can find it, would solve many of their problems, mm -hmm. uh, because it's worth mm -hmm. a great deal of money. Um, she's a very hard-charging career woman. She's finding... Um, Certainly there's some anxiety, but there's also sort of a sense of purpose in finding the treasure. Um, but she's also seeing a way of life that's not quite as heart charging and uh, is perhaps more relaxing and more human. Um, they do find the treasure in the end. They do get together in the end. The grandfather wakes up from his coma in the end. Um, happy ending. Happy all ending. <laughs> um, for people who are looking for optimistic stories. Yes, this it is, is where it is. <laughs> um, but I thought it was kind of well written. I thought the flashbacks um, to the Danish resistance were were very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and while they're not the major part of the book, they nevertheless are definitely a strong feature. Um, this book does continue with the story of the sister with the, I think it's the beekeeper's ball Sorry. or something. Oh, the sequel? Yeah, ah. there's a sequel, mm -hmm. which I would read. So mm -hmm. there you go. Um, this must have been pretty good if I want to continue with the story. Mm -hmm. um, you need but to I, find out what happens to the yes, sister. Um, this, this book does have um, some... Um, sexual content, but, you know, kind of off-screen. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought pretty well written and kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, for this next one, um, Seeds of Love by Tricia Goyer, we move to the Amish subgenre, which I would call very sweet books. And in the case of this particular one, the character, Sadie Chupp, is young enough that I, in the st because of the storyline, I think it would also appeal to teens and maybe new adults. And for the new adults is basically the publisher, this category that publishers came up with for people who fall between the ages of 18 and 24. Well, they don't call them young adults anymore? Well, young, <laughs> young adults are, are basically oh, 13 to 18. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, and new adults, okay. yes. <laughs> it, it's just been around, it hasn't been around that long, but um, Sadie has moved from Indiana to um, live with her aunt and uncle in Montana after her parents died in an accident. And her mother was a gardener and had heirloom seeds from tomatoes that Sadie took along with her. That's sort of almost, you could call it, her, her inheritance, yeah. her link to the past, to her family. And she is now in Montana in a different, you know, climate, um, different growing conditions, and she's trying to raise her seeds. And in walks Eli Plank, who is, um, who has come to Montana, and I, I didn't quite follow this, and I lived in Montana for 10 years, and I wasn't aware of this, but you can go there, and if you live there for six months, then you can uh, get a hunting license. You're, you're eligible oh. for a hunting license. And okay. and I guess at least for some of the Amish people who, who live in this place, it's a common occurrence. And they have 
some cabins that bachelors tend to come in and rent and stay there mm -hmm. for six months to establish residency to get a hunting license. So, but Eli, um, in addition to, you know, coming up here just to hunt, he's known as the bachelor scribe for the budget, which is an Amish newsletter newspaper. And he, he talks about his experiences as he moves around the mm -hmm. country because he also works for his grandfather in um, who has a seed company. So you uh, get the link here, yeah. you know, okay, things are going to happen. Seeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but for people who are interested in, you know, the Amish, what's often called the simple life, they call it, you know, they're, they're simple people. Um, someone who wants a sweet romance where the the conflict or the obstacle that they over have to overcome isn't really great it's a nice quick read yeah mm -hmm. um but probably won't help you if you really were going to start a, a seed exchange at your library <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. no okay i had to put this one in um everybody knows janet Ivanovich. uh top secret 21 stephanie plum uh, I thought this was a good one. I, the Stephanie Plum books have been, I, I don't think I disagree with the general pop population to say, a little uneven. Some of them have been better than others. I thought this one was pretty good. Uh, this one has a, quite a bit of, um, oh, it's kind of spies and intrigue because Ranger is doing security work. And Stephanie is working for Ranger this time. Oh, if you haven't read all of these. <laughs> um, Stephanie Plum, a girl from Trenton, New Jersey, lost her job as a lingerie buyer and went to work for her cousin Vinny as a bounty hunter um, in book one. We're now in book 21. And uh, Stephanie uh, is a hapless, um, not always very... Um, effective bounty hunter, but she seems to get her man because she's persistent and um, resilient. Uh, she has really two boyfriends. On a string. On a, yes, Ranger, <laughs> um, who is a mysterious um, ex-army ranger who runs a security company and uh, has in the past worked as a bounty hunter and uh, sometimes Stephanie calls on him for uh, help and uh, professional advice. And her um, high school honey, uh, who's still around and is now a cop in Trenton, New Jersey, Joe Morelli, mm -hmm. um, who, and they're both hunks, of course. Of course. <laughs> so, um, so she can't make up her mind. She can't quite make up her mind, although she's kind of made up her mind in this one. Oh, she's okay. Morelli's girl. Oh. Um, but so is this she, coming to an end? I don't or, know. Yeah. But she and Morelli still have some conflicts to work out because um, mm -hmm. Morelli seems to be settling down for a very traditional kind of existence in Trenton, New Jersey, and she's not quite sure she's ready to be a Trenton housewife. Mm -hmm. um, meanwhile, there is a cast of zany um, supporting characters, of course, um, and, uh, I don't, I think she only blows up, she usually blows up a couple cars in every book. <laughs> I think she only blows up one in this book. Um, <laughs> so someone who wants action and adventure it's, and it's humor. It's action, a lot of humor. It's mm -hmm. a, they're funny books. Um, Stephanie is lovable. And, um, Ranger and Joe are both cool. <laughs> and, um, you know, when you get to number 21 in a series, you're revisiting old friends to find out how they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we had to find out how Steph was doing this time. Um, so I can't imagine that these aren't popular in the library. Um, I can tell you they're popular on our shared yeah. overdrive collection. Uh -huh. I bet they are. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we were talking a little bit about series and... Mm -hmm. uh, that it's common in romance for things to be in series. Um, sometimes the series are simply a number of books that are sort of linked by characters that show up in more than one of the books. But the books really do stand alone themselves. Other times, um, the books are really a series to the point where they're really one very long 
story that you need to read from the beginning. Um, I would say that each of these books stands alone, but it probably does enhance the reading experience somewhat if you've read them from the beginning. Does that mean that you need to keep them all? Um, those are tough decisions to make. Um, I would generally say that if you have a series, you should keep the whole series as mm -hmm. long as it's um, still running. But if the author um, has stopped, if the series is finished, or the author is no longer with us, mm -hmm. then maybe you'd get rid of the whole series. Um, when it's no longer popular, if it's yeah. still circulating, mm -hmm. then so you... With yeah. this, I don't it's know. It's better to have, I think the series can be very frustrating when if the yes. library only has some. I and think has, so. Like said, oh, these books are popular. Let's start getting them now. And you don't have all the previous ones. People are going to want to go back and see, wait, I want to see the beginning of this. So you really either need to have all or none. Well, I, I kind of feel that way. But at the same time, I do understand that libraries have space issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, there are 21 of these now. Mm -hmm. So do you need to keep them all? I think if uh, you have people who are coming new to the series, um, you might want to keep them all. Um, otherwise, these might stand alone well enough. And they would be easy enough to get oh, from uh, elsewhere. Yeah. From elsewhere, if, if you well, wanted What's the to. level of sexiness in this one? I mean, um, these are kind of, I would give them a um, C plus. <laughs> um, they're not, they're not really, really graphic, but there is sex in them and uh, frank sexual content. And mm -hmm. the whole uh, setup of Steph Stephanie working with Ranger and uh, being Joe. more or less engaged oh. to Joe Morelli. Um, leads to a, a sexual um, dilemma for her sometimes and uh, it's an it's an adult book it's it's not there's more than kissing going on <laughs> um, okay <laughs> you have a, a question um necessarily about that book, uh -huh. but um I, I just forget to answer this for everyone because i didn't say this at the beginning um, this PowerPoint presentation will be available afterwards for you to have the books, but, and I remember this before, do we have a list of all the titles, like a, a Word document, or we just tell people if you want to know, this would be the place to go to the PowerPoint to get a list of all the um, books you're mentioning. We could we could put word. together a list okay. if you want. All right, we'll put together um, a list, yeah. So you can have that as well, but the PowerPoint will also be posted as well for you to go through. In, in some ways that would be frustrating because I don't think we could say these were the top Romances. These no, are the romances the ones we, mentioned in this session. we yeah, happened to yeah. read. And, yeah. and most of the ones that I picked were, I was looking for something that had been published recently. Mm. So a yeah. lot of them are, you mm. know, from within the last few months. Ah. So mm -hmm. but, most of mine are, yeah, were recent. So, so there are a lot of other good authors out there. These are just a representation. And you know, when you're, if you're doing readers, the idea was if you're doing readers advisory or even for collection development, even though you, you might not read romance um, as a general rule, you should be familiar with the different genres and subgenres within mm -hmm. that and ta try them out every once in a while. Mm -hmm. See yeah. why. So that you could talk to somebody right. about why, oh, you like this kind of book? Well, you might also like this title. Mm -hmm. um, I, yes, read-alikes, I think, are very important. Um, mm -hmm. And probably um, knowing some of the, the top authors right. and following authors. Uh, one of the things I found when I was looking for information about the books, and I started to include it, and then it got silly, they all seem to have their own websites, and their mm -hmm. websites all seem to be www.firstnamelastname.com. <laughs> of the other, yeah. So Any it's standard, it's yeah. very easy to find information mm -hmm. um, about the authors and their books. Mm -hmm. But yes, we'll put together a list of the ones that were specifically sure. mentioned in our session today. Yeah. So you know, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone that had come in late was wanting to know about some of these. Okay. Okay. Well, moving on to the next title, "Abandon the Dark" by Marta Perry. 
again, she is a popular author, at least within our the patrons who use the Nebraska Shared Overdrive collection. This particular book is romantic suspense. It falls into that category, but it has an Amish link. And actually, Marta Perry, in addition to writing this type of romantic suspense, also writes just simple, simply Christian romance and Amish romance. So she has several different series lines going. Um, this particular one, again, is part of a series. Um, the series is called Watchers of the Dark. And this one is, I think, the third one in. Hmm. Um, you could read it as a, you can read it as a standalone. Um, you might like to read them in order just to get the full flavor of the mystery that's going on um, with this particular series. It, um, <clears throat> in this one, Lainey Cotton, Colton, sorry, a graphic designer, has come back to Deer Run, Pennsylvania from St. Louis because her aunt, who is Amish, um, has become seriously ill and has given Lainey the power of attorney over her property and, and money, etc. Um, Jake L. Evans, the hero, is her aunt's lawyer. Okay, um, Lainey's mother left the Amish community, so Lainey herself is not Amish, but she comes into contact with her aunt's family who has stayed within the traditional community and there's some conflicts there over whether she really, you know, as an outsider, should have power of attorney for her aunt or not. So there's that going on and then there's also the fact that when she was 10, she spent the summer with her aunt and uncle in Deer Run and um, there was a, a death at the time that she left. And she's come back now and has found out that one of the girls that she spent a lot of time with that summer had recently returned and or had returned a few months ago and had actually stirred things up over this death of a young man, a teenager actually, and her mother had been murdered. They think they have the man who killed both her mother and the young man, but now Lainey is being bothered with pranks, anonymous letters, and other things going on. So the question is, did she maybe see something when she was 10 that, she, that was linked to this death? Or is it something that's followed her from St. Louis because she left sort of under sort of a cloud um, from a situation there too? So there's all that suspense going on. So if you have someone who likes a suspense, type story along with their romance. Um, if you, They like the Amish link, but it doesn't necessarily have to so focus solely on the Amish life. Um, people who are interested in, again, not a lot of graphic sex, but a good story about uh, a hero, hero and heroine who um, come together. It's an interesting book. Okay. Okay, now we get to Suzanne Brockman, um, a very popular author. Uh, Brockman writes, um, has written a whole series about the Troubleshooters, a um, security company started by an ex-Navy SEAL. Uh, she's also written a number of books about the Navy SEALs, SEAL Company 16. Mm -hmm. And these Navy SEALs, of course, are all built of course. Tall, to be. hunky, yeah. smart, competent. <laughs> well, they have to be to be seals. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> she really, um, and they uh, linked stories, uh, very much linked stories. This is kind of a new series, um, The Reluctant Heroes. And this shows a man who is an ex Navy SEAL. He's kind of working on his own, in his own security company. Um, meets a um, strong, competent woman. She's a lawyer. Um, and they get sort of involved reluctantly, very reluctantly, with uh, some folks who are um, going to carry out some terrorist activities. And they're, they're trying to stop the terrorists. And then it turns out that maybe they're really mobsters. And mm -hmm. a lot of action. Um, a lot of um, 
it, not not mystery intrigue, more uh, not suspense, but more um, action adventure kind of thing. Um, the heroine, a uh, strong woman, really takes a major role in the action as well. It's not just the, the men. Um, it's more out to save the world than just solve a mystery. Yeah, it's not, well, it's, it's to, or, you know, uh, get everybody out alive, yeah. kind of. A lot of peril going on here, but it's not the woman in peril saved by the big, strong man. Um, <laughs> it, it's uh, tough, determined people who aren't sure they can pull this off, but they'll give it their best by gosh. Um, and um, quite a bit of sex. Um, oh, I think one of the fun things about it is a rather snappy dialogue. Very mm -hmm. snappy dialogue. <laughs> um, and we do see um, one of her continuing characters um, from previous books. This is in the same universe as the other books, mm -hmm. but it's not really part of the other series. Um, people who have read Brockman, I think, have probably read all of Brockman. I have to tell you, I started reading Suzanne Brockman because I read an article where they asked several um, best-selling romance authors who they read. And oh, all wow. of them said they read Suzanne Brockman. I thought, well, okay, i got to try her. <laughs> um, and I have enjoyed her very much. Um, fairly long books. Um, and uh, this one, again, I did an audio. The audio are very good. Um, and I recommend them for people who want a um, contemporary... A strong heroine and adventure and and don't mind some tough language mm. okay it's not oh it's not going forward no there. oh there we go there we go okay just a little slow here mm. okay the next one um, grim shadows by Jen Bennett you know it, it looks pretty grim um, so you might think, you know, dark, dark, dark. Well, there is some, but I found a lot of humor in this particular book. Um, for a while there, with romances, it was very common to have the alpha male, you know, yeah. the brooding, wounded character. That's not this book. <laughs> um, Lo Magnuson um, is an, more of a swashbuckling archaeologist. <laughs> Okay. Um, and Indiana Jones. And, well, sort of. And he um, he has a little bit of a problem just stating facts. Okay. Um, he's called a con man a couple times, but actually, he sort of reminded me of my brother-in-law, who's definitely not a con man. But if he can sell you a story oh. rather than just telling the truth, it's so much more fun. And, well, you know. Okay. <laughs> so of course that leads to. Trust issues. <laughs> the heroine, Hadley Bacall, who's a curator. Um, okay. Can you trust a guy who's going to tell you a story all the time instead of just stating the facts? Hmm. And especially, this, is the this story takes place in the 1920s. And she's a woman in a man's field. She's struggling to... Um, to work herself into the position where she will take over the museum when her father retires, okay? And things have started to happen um, with her father. He is, he's ill, things are happening that she can't quite figure out. Um, and in walks uh, Lo, and her father promises to make him the head of the museum over her if he uh, does certain things. Okay, so there's a conflict there. Then it sort of reminded me a little bit of that old movie, The Mummy, because mm. you've got Egyptian curses. Ooh. Okay, and not only <laughs> is Hadley, you know, trying to become, you know, fighting for her place in a man's in a man's uh, profession. But she inherited this Egyptian curse from her mother. If she, there are these demons, and if she gets angry, the demons attack whatever she's angry at. Ooh, I'm going to give me that. some of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it 
can lead to some problems, though, and her father is not pleased with her, you know, on quite a number of occasions. But I found it just a very entertaining story. It takes place in San Francisco. Um, you've got these wonderful characters. You've got um, this mystery they're trying to solve. Her, her mother uh, left behind uh, pictographs, so they have to solve the pictographs to find a particular object to actually save her father because of this illness. It's, it's caused by another person. So okay. there's mystery, there's, you know, all this other stuff. It is part of a series. It's actually the second one in a series. And the two main characters in the first book are carried over to this one. They're actually um, Lowe's brother and sister-in-law. And the sister-in-law is a spiritualist. She can actually talk to ghosts. So you've got the ghosts, you've got the, the um, demons. The demons, you know, you've got all this curses going on. It's just, it's a fun book. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, ten things I love about you, Julia Quinn. Um, this is not a brand new book, and I, I did this one in audio, too. Um, this is more a traditional Regency romance. Um, young heroine um, needs to marry well uh, because her family is um, not financially secure, um, has grandparents who want to, and has come to London to find a husband during the season, has grandparents who want to marry her off to um, an elderly man, but he's titled well-to-do and he wants an heir. She meets and begins to fall for our hero, who uh, his deep, dark secret is that he writes gothic novels. <laughs> oh, no. Um, and actually, mm. that's kind of it. Um, there's no big, really, um, the, the conflict is that she, to marry this rich, older man, her family would be secure, but she really digs this younger guy. Um, there's quite a bit of humor in it. It's a light book. Um, it's uh, not not very sexy at all. Um, and um, the the um, the hero has this quirk, but the heroine actually, I would say, was not a terribly well developed character as far mm -hmm. as the way it's written. Mm -hmm. um, the strongest character in the book, the it probably is the the grandmother, who's uh, very tart-tongued, and so it's kind of fun. Um, and uh, several times people make lists of ten things. They, whatever, whatever. And so these are, these are ten things she loved about him. Um, it's a cute book, a fast read, uh, pleasant to listen to. Um, I would read more Julia Quinn. I have not encountered her before. So, um, but... Not setting the world on fire, but but good, you know. Okay. Okay, Keeper of the Moon uh, by Harley Jane Kozak. Uh, this is actually a book from last year. I was asked to read this particular one. She is a Nebraska author, and this is her first romance. Okay. Um, I, say she is, she, I don't know her. I know her as Nebraska, but not for this uh -huh. uh, genre. Yeah, right. she wrote mysteries. Yeah. She wrote mysteries. But uh -huh. she actually got together with two friends, um, Heather Graham and Alexandra Sokoloff. And they came up with these three characters, three female cousins, and they're each writing about one, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I read, I haven't read the others. I, I read this one by Harley Jane. And it is a paranormal actually. Um, there are elven, werewolves, vampires, and shapeshifters. Wow. Okay. The main characters, Sailor Griffold, um, and I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing that name right, but that's as close as I can come. <laughs> um, she is an elven keeper for a section of Los Angeles. Okay. <laughs> and Declan Wainwright, the hero, is a sh shapeshifter keeper. And the um, the action does take place 
around the whole Hollywood scene, um, people, women actually, who are linked somehow to the movie industry have been attacked and have died. Um, people outside the, the, the special people, the keepers, etc., cetera, um, don't know, realize that they've been infected with what's called the um, scarlet pathogen. And the women were all elven, you know, because the elven people are beautiful, so of course they have to be, you know, the actors and actresses, etc. Mm. Um, <laughs> there is some sex, it's not too graphic, you know, harlequins with their different lines have different levels of um, intimacy, you know, prescribed. Um, Um, I guess that's all I have to say about it at the moment. Is the uh, nocturne so, is the Harlequin nocturne line usually paranormal or is it usually you know, just mystery? I didn't check. I'm not well, sure. we can find that out if you go to the Harlequin website. They really will tell you pretty much exactly what is in all of these different lines that they so the Blaze, Temptation, Special I don't do they special I don't think they have a special moments. Um special moments. Um, but yeah, um, Harlequin Nocturne. American stories. Del this is from the Harlequin website. I just Googled Harlequin Nocturne. Pretty easy. Delves into dark, sensuous, often dangerous territory where the normal and paranormal collide. So there you go. Paranormal, like all the things you talked about, this is the um, series to look for. Yeah, in so if people yeah. in your library can't get enough of the paranormal, here you go. Paranormal mm -hmm. romance. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, from the paranormal, we're going to move to um, this series, and I did, I put all the um, titles. titles down because she's written quite a few now. Mm -hmm. um, these are all uh, sort of linked books about the pink carnation, a spy, an English spy in France during the Napoleonic era. Um, so they are sort of regencies, but sort of not. Um, they also have a contemporary twist to them, too. Yeah, they do have a contemporary twist that some of it's told in flashback. We have a young a researcher, she's, she's working on her PhD, mm -hmm. and she's trying to find information about the pink carnation, because the pink carnation um, operated for a long time and never was caught and never was identified. People really don't know who the Pink Carnation was, but then we go back into the story, the historic story, and we know exactly who the Pink Carnation is. But I won't tell because I'll keep it a surprise. <laughs> and the other <laughs> members, yeah. yes. and, and the other members of the spy ring. <laughs> yes, and there are many other members of the spy ring. Um, they're cute. Many of the uh, conventions of the Regency romance. Um, the couple I've read, uh, this particular one uh, is actually a governess. Um, she's a governess slash spy um, who goes to work for a um, French official. Uh, he, he works in the Department of Police in France, but it turns out that he's really working for the restoration of the monarchy. And then they um, get discovered and they have to uh, flee for their lives in the guise of a band of traveling players. Um, it's it's fun. It was a lot of fun. I thought they were pretty well written. Um, I, I enjoyed the little bit of intrigue. The romance is definitely a major part of it, but it's not graphic. Um, I had not read her before, and I am now reading, um, I think, my third one. I've read The Orchid Affair and The Garden Intrigue, and I am now reading um, The Temptation of the Night Jasmine. You didn't start out with number one? I did not start out with number one. So I guess you don't have to. to no, no uh, you, yeah. I don't think you really do. If you want to keep up with a contemporary story, part of the story, which isn't the major part of yeah. the story, you do. I would recommend you start at the beginning. Okay. But... <laughs> That's me. <laughs> but um, I have read. Most I'm of enjoying them. Too, so. The uh, actually, I found the um, the names of them, the deception of the you know, and the and the uh, the passion of the purple plumeria. 
You couldn't get me to read a book called The Passion of the Purple Plumeria for anything in the world. You're judging a book by its color. I am. I absolutely am. But um, I just tell you, hold your nose and get past that, and you'll be fine. Um, they're arch, you know, and I can't, I'm not into that kind of thing. But actually, the, the stories themselves were cute and pretty well written. And not all of them take place in France either. No, so. some of them are, are in England. This one that I've just started is um, a, a duke returns to England after having served in the army in India, which, you know, is not weird because actually uh, the Duke of Wellington was in India. That's where he really made his name before he came back to England and fought Napoleon. Was He, he mm -hmm. served in India. So... I can't remember which one it was, but one of them does take place in India to mm. the whole story, or the whole spy story part okay. of it, historical part. So. Okay. Yeah. The next one, but, uh, Lost Lake by Sarah Addison Allen, um, sort of follows along with, I think, the Su Susan Wiggs one. Yeah. It's not a, what normally is labeled as a romance story, but I call it a literary love story. Okay. Um, I... I enjoyed this one. Um, she had a book come out a couple years ago called the, oh gosh, I just forgot the name of it, the Peach Keepers something. Well, you see the Anyway, it, it, was, it was very, very popular, so, which started me reading her titles. Um, and I liked that one. The, the Peach Keeper. Oh, The Peach Keeper. Yes, okay. Thank you. I really liked The Peach Keeper, and I really liked... Which does sound like a piece of Tupperware, but okay. Well, and it wasn't. Um, it, it took play... It, she writes southern books, okay? Okay. Lost Lake is actually a small camp um, with cabins in rural Georgia. It's about four, four hours away from Atlanta, okay? The, there are sort of more than one main character, but the main young character is Kate Ferris, who's a widow. And her husband died a year ago, and she's sort of been sleepwalking through life this past year. But she has an eight-year-old daughter who her mother-in-law has taken over, and she's on the way to totally taking over Kate their whole life. And Devon, her daughter, really, you know, she doesn't like the private school. She doesn't like the fact that her grandmother won't let her wear what she likes to wear. But grandmother has sold the house. She's a real estate mogul. Um, and so they, they're packing things up. They have to move mm -hmm. out. Okay. Well, they're in the attic, and Devon finds a postcard from Lost Lake from Aunt Ebby, who is Kate's great aunt. Kate um, actually spent a summer, part of a summer, at Lost Lake with her great aunt Ebby and Uncle George um, and met Wes there, a boy that, that she mm -hmm. had adventures with. But her mother got really upset with her aunt and they left abruptly. Okay, Hasn't seen her since. Well, the postcard was from Aunt Ebby inviting Kate to come back at any time. So... Kate has, you know, just come awake and she's realized what her mother-in-law has been doing to her daughter and to her life and to her, Kate's own life. So they decide to take off and see if Lost Lake still exists. She hasn't heard from Aunt Abby for 15 years, okay? So they go down there. Well, of course, it's, you know, Southern. You've got all these eccentric characters. You've got um, magical elements, which often occur in Alan's stories. Um, <clears throat> One of the Library of Congress subject headings for this book was First Loves, but I actually look at it more as it's second chances. Mm -hmm. Second chances at life, second chances at love, where, what are you going to do, okay? Um, and it turns out everybody is changed. Ebby's on the, the brink of selling the resort. Does she or doesn't she? Her three regulars that have been coming back for years and years, um, what are they going to do to help keep it alive? Um, it's it, it's just a really nice story. It sounds like it's fun. in it's um, uh, no sexual intimacy. It's just okay. you know each each person. Got it. Got it. Okay. 
we're kind of I running out of time here, so we'll, we can um, we'll go as long as needed. Um, just okay. so everyone in the audience knows, um, the, the show officially does go to eleven um, Central Time, but um, we won't get cut off by our software or anything. So we'll go as long as needed to get all okay. of your titles in and um, everything you want to say about them. Um, but if you guys need to go um, from the audience, that's fine. We're recording, and you can always watch later or just get the list later for any of the titles that you missed. Okay. So. Do what you need to do. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to say a lot about this. Obviously, um, this has been... Um, oh, this is a new TV this, show. This is the brand, um, this is the brand new... Um, title within, title the within the series. Mm -hmm. um, it's the Outlander series. It really is one long book. <laughs> um, you really do need to read these in order. Uh, story of Claire and Jamie Fraser, who... Um, start out in, well, before Culloden, which is what, 1741, 42, something. something like that, and we're now in the middle of the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. um, these people have gone through a lot together. <laughs> uh, does have paranormal um, elements because Claire is actually a modern woman. Uh, was a nurse mm -hmm. in World War II, but somehow in the Scottish Highlands um, was um, collecting uh, herbs up in the highlands in one of the standing circles of stones and by gosh she time traveled for 200 years and went back in time. Mm -hmm. um, an interesting uh, device to make a heroine in an historical book a modern heroine mm -hmm. and um, not the time is, is sort of not out of joint there mm -hmm. that way. Um, Jamie Fraser is uh, the perfect man <laughs> he is. Let's just all admit that. <laughs> um, these are great if if you're into the the kind of saga. Um, good people, good strong uh, protagonists. A lot of secondary characters at this point that we're interested in. Um, and I can't imagine that these wouldn't be popular in your library, and that you wouldn't want to keep them all. And it has just recently started as a TV show on yeah. Stars, so you have to pay for yeah, the Stars well, Network. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but, but and that just started. Well, just Stars started. gave us all a free preview uh, this right. weekend, I, so we could yeah, see Outlander. So then, you know, I did call them on Monday to subscribe, <laughs> so I could see the rest of it because it was pretty good, was it good? and followed the book very closely. Was, that's something people have probably wondered how close. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, you know, I, you could have viewing parties at your library. I don't know, but it, yes, um, very popular books um, by an author who's really um, done a lot with them. So, oops, I might need to click back there. There you, there you go. go. <laughs> okay. Kristen Higgins' book, In Your Dreams, is actually not out until September 30th. I um, actually got a copy of this through NetGalley, which is one way you can preview books. You do have to set up an account on NetGalley, and you, you usually have to put in a request and then be approved to get a copy of particular books. But in this case, I happened to sit in on a webinar that was done by some Harlequin staff, <laughs> and uh, they um, offered... I asked to get a Gallic copy and they just gave it to me because through the chat in that webinar. So um, it took a, it didn't, wasn't immediate, but they did send me an email with a direct link to this book then. So so there's there's this net galley and then there's another mm -hmm. one called Edelweiss, Edelweiss. where you can mm -hmm. get um, copies of books before they're actually published. Right. Um, Kristen Higgins is a very popular book. This is a contemporary. Emmeline Neal, um, a police officer in a small town in western New York, is the heroine. And uh, the hero is Jack Holland, who, whose family has a winemaking business in the area. And he um, is a chemist, actually. He, went, he got a, a degree in, in college. The... Um, there are several themes that are going on in this particular story. Um, there's P PTSD. Um, Jack is suffering from, um, uh, from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. 
actually from not a situation that comes up very often. Um, he actually saved some teenage boys whose car went off uh, the road into a lake, into an ice cold lake. Um, he, they're all alive, but one of them did not um, come out of it well uh, and is in the hospital. And while everyone's calling Jack a hero and talking him up, you know, he's continually having flashbacks. Did I do everything I could do? And, you know, all this kind of thing. Um, Emmeline um, is sort of a brash character. Um, she's had to make a life for herself. Um, she stuttered as a child, and her, her two parents, who are psychiatrists, could never fix her. Um, which caused problems, so she went to live with her grandmother in this small town, and um, her parents then immediately adopted another girl who's perfect. So, <laughs> you know, it's sort of, a, you know, so you have all these family dynamics going on, but the, one of the main... Lots of baggage going lots on Lots of baggage. So if you're interested in, you know, wacky families, if you're interested in, you know, how do you handle with PTSD, if you're interested in, um, okay, the, another line going here is that her ex-fiance is getting married in Malibu, California and has invited her to the wedding. His parents and her parents are best friends, are, are good friends, you know, so that, that's all going mm -hmm. on there. So Jack goes with her and they, that's actually sort of more or less their first date when he goes with her, um, and then it continues on from there. This is part of a series, um, the Blue Heron uh, series, and other care, uh, the other books um, involve people in the small, one lady from the small town plus to uh, a couple of Jack sisters, so. But it's coming up, so coming you can up. order one for yep. your library if you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is Anne Stewart, Ruthless. Anne Stewart has been writing romances since the mid-70s, and I've been reading her since then. Um, I love Anne Stewart. She's written all kinds of books. She writes historicals. She writes contemporaries. Um, she's, um, she likes to be a little outrageous. She likes to make her heroes very, very, very bad boys, <laughs> which is uh, kind of fun because, you know, then the prim and proper uh, heroine reforms them or mm. makes them realize that what they were really searching for was the love of a good woman. Um, and yet they're fun. Uh, this, these, this one and these are really linked books more than a series. Um, a historical, um, the a house of Rohan, a man who actually, you know, what can I say? He he likes to have orgies, um, but he finds out that that isn't what he's really interested in. What he's really interested in is this prim and proper spinster, who of course is living a life of penury and um, want, and he takes her away from all of it, um, and. I'm sounding kind of um, skeptical about the whole thing, but really, <laughs> Anne Stewart just writes a really fun book, um, if you like that kind of thing. <laughs> and she's written a lot of books in a lot of different genres, mm -hmm. um, but I really recommend her, and her website's a lot of fun, too. Okay. Really? I'm having... Oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. You want to just do this? Okay. Okay. Um, I'll talk about this one really quickly. This is another uh, historical. It's n They never really pinpointed the exact time frame, at least that I could find, but early 1800s. At one point, the, the hero was complaining to a friend about the reading group and um, the fact that they were, they were reading Pride and Prejudice. And he couldn't get over the fact that women seem to think that every man was in want of a wife, you know, <laughs> or that every man ended up with a wife at the end of the story. You know, that just, he, he starts off the book not wanting to get married, basically, okay? And, of course, you know, that, that changes. 
he falls in love with Damaris Chance, who is an orphan, um, and has actually um, uh, created her own family with several of other young women and an, and an aunt. Okay, um, in the first book, one of the sisters, uh, uh, foster sisters, got married off, and now Freddie is looking after the other girls and the aunt while the, the couple is on their honeymoon. Well, Damaris has had bad interactions with men in the past and isn't interested in a husband. She just wants a cottage all her own in the country, and she's actually working without the other people's knowledge in a pottery to make money to help buy this cottage. Well, Freddie um, acts like a, um, uh, a fop, but uh, um, a foolish fop, but he's actually an astute businessman and he's made his own fortune even though he's an aristocrat. Um, and the other story, his story, is that there was an accident He's the younger son. There was an accident. His older brother died. He's been blamed by his parents. His parents don't speak to him. So, of course, you know, she, she, Damaris changes things. <laughs> Good. So, it, it was a very interesting book. It, it just is a slightly different take on um, that whole historical England type story. Okay. Okay, here you go. One of your own ah, favorites. Yeah. I put these two in here by Mary Stewart just to talk a minute about the fact that they, publishers are reissuing um, older books. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mary Stewart wrote in, mostly in the 50s and 60s the, the, the rom she just romances, died. Rom romantic romances. Yes. Mm -hmm. She died, <clears throat> excuse me, in May at the age of 97. She hasn't been writing for some time. Yeah. Um, Madam Will You Talk was her first book, um, and it was written in the early 50s. This Rough Magic was written in 1964. So they're actually what you would call properly contemporary because they're about the time, they're written about the time that they were written yeah. in, okay? But to us, they could be historicals because, you know, it's, oh, from, yeah. a, it's from a past time. Some people still really love these. Some people say, oh, they're dated. No, the, the point of view, the words they use. Well, I'm sorry. They were written at that time about so, that time. You so, as, you know, yes. yeah. so, so you sometimes have to stop and think some about historicals and how accurate they are. Okay, So many of them now have our thoughts and our moral viewpoints in them, yes. things that didn't really exist at that time. Yeah. But does it make a good story? I think so. Um, and, I, and I think you do have to consider whether people still really want to read these. No. They're not being, a, a number of authors are not only being reissued in print, they're being reissued as ebooks. And um, I can tell you for a fact that through the group Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Uh, collection uh, through Overdrive, there are people who are asking for books by Grace Livingston Hill, yeah, who wrote Christian fiction, you know, decades ago, um, and uh, Barbara Michaels, who's also Elizabeth Peters. Yeah, she, she just wrote, died. Yeah, and she died last year. Um, so there are there is a demand out there for these older titles, but you do have to be aware if you're not familiar with these authors. <laughs> Check the um, publication date when you do look at a book, just to make sure that you know it is a current title if that's what you're looking for. Yes, um, and many of the romances that you would think were written fairly recently have also been reissued um, when an author is really mm -hmm. popular. So make sure that you do check uh, copyright dates and yeah. check titles. Yeah, actually, in in the one. In a recent Publishers Weekly, they had a page, you know, of authors that they're uh, putting books out for, Linda Howard and Jane Ann Cranes, Yeah. and they're all titles that were written back in the 80s. Yeah. So they are reissuing you, you things. You want to check that. 
for very popular authors. Now here's a really popular author coming up September 9th. This is one of my favorites, J.D. Robb, who I don't think it's any secret is Nora Roberts. Uh -huh. um, this is, oh, like what, the 39th or 40th or around 40th <laughs> book in this long going series about Eve Dallas, a New York um, police detective in, 20, in the year 2060. Um, they're great fun. Uh, Eve is married to another perfect man, Rourke, the enigmatic Irish billionaire. Uh, has a huge cast of, char of um, supporting characters who at this point um, um, we like to see. Um, the books do stand alone, but the overarching uh, relationships of people um, have developed through the book, so people may want to read them in order, but I don't think that's absolutely necessary, but uh, people might like them. Um, I have to say, I've read most of these, again, in audio. I like audio. Um, and the, the narrator, the reader, Susan good. Erickson, is very good. So um, these are just really fun. And another fun one coming up, Susan Elizabeth Phillips, one of the great romance authors. Um, she writes a really solid book, generally does have a little bit more than fluff. There's usually actually a little substance to her books. Um, and um, she has written some books that are um, connected to the Chicago Stars football team. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, some of them are standalone. Uh, anyway, these are certainly books to be looking for. I think people will want them. These are both really popular authors. Um, we just wanted to go really fast to a couple of places. Here, Harlequin does send out a newsletter. You can subscribe to it and get it in your email. This will kind of tell you a little bit about new things coming up in the Harlequin world. Um, as we said, Harlequin's not the only publisher, but they are a big publisher of romance and um, worth paying a little bit of attention to in terms of your collection development. Some uh, places to get reviews. Of course, we hope that you're reading the reviews in Library Journal and Booklist and maybe Publishers Weekly. Um, these are reviews written by people who have some background in book reviewing and of course they're edited. Um, some of these the, the uh, blogs and websites are from people who are enthusiasts. Many of them have uh, quite a bit of uh, knowledge of the uh, romance uh, genre, but you do have to kind of read them enough to get an idea of what their point of view is and um, if their personal taste is really influencing. Sometimes people review a book on the basis of how good the book is and sometimes review people review a book on how well they liked it. Those are really kind of two different things mm -hmm. and you have to read reviews a little carefully. But here's a place to read uh, reviews of romances uh, in DearAuthor.com. You move the, move the mouse over to the PowerPoint. There you go. And one more time. Okay, uh, Romantic Times is actually a magazine that comes out in print and they do have a um, website as well. They rate the romances. Um, and of course, look, if you say locked in with John Scalzi there, um, that he writes um, science fiction. So they do a little bit more than just romances. But this is a place to find uh, information about these books. And then all about romance. Um, sort of a place for people to hang out and talk about their romances. And I just picked this up the other, well, actually yesterday, and you will see that they're actually talking there about the um, television program that was on on Saturday about mm -hmm. Outlander. So a few places if you really, um, as we said, romance is a big piece of a lot of people's reading. It's a lot of um, publication, and it's maybe worth uh, getting a little bit serious about it in terms of your collection. Well, I did notice that many, I didn't count, of those um, book covers says New York Times best-selling yeah. author. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so anyway, that is our kind of look at romance. We hope you enjoyed it. We 
enjoy reading them. We enjoy talking about the books we read. Um, it's interesting to read something that I don't normally read, too. <laughs> yes, so. And, you know, let us know what you're reading. We'd, we'd love to hear about it. If you've got an author that you think we ought to try, let us know. We'll try it. And um, thank you. Okay? Are we done? Cool. Good. If you're okay. done, you're we're done. done. Yes, okay. <laughs> let me see the... All right. Thank you very much, Laura and Deborah, and everyone for sticking around here. Uh, there we go. Um, that will wrap it up for this morning's Encompass Live. The show has been recorded and we'll have the PowerPoint available and a list at some point of just all the titles as well so you can access all of them uh, that way. Anything else? And oh, those last two websites are also captured into our Delicious account as well, cool. so that you'll have links to those um, too um, afterwards for looking at more information about romance books. So that will wrap it up for this morning. I hope you join us next week when our topic is what you need to know to apply for a youth grant. This is specifically for the Youth Excellence Grants that we offer here at the Nebraska Library Commission, and Deborah will be back with us again. Yes. <laughs> Got ourselves scheduled two weeks in a row. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but as Sally um, mentioned in the description, uh, that what we'll be talking about can also be applied to other grants, but we right. we are um, the Youth for Excellence grants will be coming. The applications will be available here shortly, and so we thought we'd talk about them before mm -hmm. those were available. Give a little before, heads up before people started working on them. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, join us for that and any of the other um, sessions that we have scheduled for over the next um, month or so. Um, also, Encompass Live is on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, <coughs> excuse me, you can follow us on there. You get notifications of when um, new sessions are coming up, when recordings are available. Um, just keep you up to date on what's going on with the show. So other than that, that wraps it up for us. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Laura and Deborah, And we Thank will you. see you um, next week on the show. Cool. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.